In this series of videos, we're going to be creating a top-down RPG using content from the Unity Asset Store. Our goal for this video is to show how we can easily integrate assets from the Unity Asset Store into an existing Unity project. For our top-down RPG, we want characters with detailed textures and high-quality animations to match the realistic terrain and environmental props which the project already includes. For this video, we will be integrating character models and animations into an existing prototype. For our character models and textures, we will be using PBR Characters Orcs Pack. This pack contains humanoid characters, PBR textures, audio, and animations. For animations, we will be using an asset called Longsword Animset Pro. This contains over 140 animations for a character armed with a sword. Perfect for our game. We are also using a weapon from the Ancient Treasure asset which includes a number of fantasy sword meshes and textures. If we take a look at our completed scene, we can see the character in action. He is able to easily navigate the environment with an RTS-style point-and-click system. We can also see, as we move our character, how the animations blend between idle and walking. If we press the right click, or fire to button, a new animation triggers along with some particle effects and audio. These really help to bring the project to life. We are using audio from the Orcs pack and particles from the Realistic Effects Pack 4 asset. Remember, this workflow isn't just for these specific assets. We are able to retarget the animations because they use a humanoid rig, as do many other assets on the Asset Store. Let's take a look at how to set this up. We've closed our completed scene. Here we have a scene which contains a simple terrain, a pre built nav mesh, and a capsule with a Navmash agent component attached. This represents our player in our prototype. We also have the player controller simple script attached to this game object. Let's open the script and take a look at what functionality it brings to our humble capsule. This script handles movement and animation of the player in our scene, as well as triggering audio and particle effects. You can find a link to the completed script in the description below. Let's take a look at the handle movement function first. Here, the script activates an animation using the float parameter move. Move is a float parameter in our animator's state machine. The handle movement function handles moving the player via input .get mouse button down. The function cast skill effect triggers a taunt animation for the character, activates the particle effect, and plays an audio clip. In Unity, if we press play, we can see that the script allows us to move the capsule. We simply click on the terrain, and the capsule moves to that point. If we press the trigger button, an audio clip plays, and a particle system is triggered. This is all well and good, but a capsule isn't the most captivating player character. Furthermore, the capsule has no animator or associated state machine to play any interesting animations. Let's bring in our character model to fix this. Before we do so though, let's take a look at how our player has been set up. With the player game object expanded, we can see it is split into four components. Graphics, audio, VFX, and UI. It is good practice to set your game objects up in this way. This means that graphics are separated from functionality. They can easily be amended or updated with other assets or systems. First, let's disable the capsule. We do this by setting the capsule game object to inactive in the inspector window. Next, let's drag the orc character prefab from the project window. Let's place it as a child of our empty game object called graphics. This is a child of our player game object. To complete the player character, our player orc is holding a weapon. The weapon is from the Ancient Treasures sword pack. Let's drag this in and assign it to the palm of our orc character model. Let's expand the orc character's hierarchy until we find the position named cat right arm palm. Now let's drag the sword in as a child object. Let's scale, position, and rotate the sword so that it's aligned with the orc's hand. We may need to make some further tweaks to this once we begin animating so that it looks natural. If we press play, the orc has no idle animation, and if we click to move, he doesn't animate to walk or run either. 
This can easily be fixed using Unity's animation system along with Animset Pro. Animset Pro contains over 140 animations for a character armed with a sword. Perfect for our orc character. In Unity, it's possible to apply animation design for one character to another using a process called retargeting. Retargeting requires that the rig, which is effectively the animation skeleton of our character, be of the humanoid type. Currently, our orc is using a generic rig, so we are going to select it, switch it to the humanoid type, and hit apply. This will allow us to map our longsword animations onto our orc's rig. We want our character to perform a taunt animation when we press the trigger button. We will use a taunt animation from Animset Pro and drag it onto the orc game object in the hierarchy. If we select the orc game object, we can see that an animator named the same as the game object has been created. Now, if we enter play mode to test, we can see that the animation plays immediately but only plays once. Let's double click the animator in the inspector to open it. We can see that on entry, when the game starts, the taunt animation plays. We only want this to trigger when the battle cry parameter in the script is triggered. We need to complete a couple of tasks for this to happen. First, let's right click on the any state node and make a transition. Let's drag the arrow to the taunt node. Next, let's add a battle cry parameter. We can select the parameter tab and press the plus button to add a parameter. Let's add a parameter of type trigger and call this battle cry. The name is case sensitive, so let's be sure to spell it in the same way as stated in the player controller simple script. Remember, we are going to be using the script to trigger this animation. This means that the orc can perform a taunt from any other state or animation that it is in. Let's also make sure that our taunt animation will play when the battle cry trigger is pressed. Let's select the transition and add the battle cry parameter to the list of conditions. We also want our orc to be able to idle, run and walk. This can be achieved through the use of a blend tree, allowing us to blend between animations based on a value. Let's right click in the animator window and select Create State from New Blend Tree. Let's rename this blend tree Movement and the taunt to Battle Cry just for clarity. You will see that on adding a blend tree, a new parameter of type Float has been created. Let's make sure that this parameter is called Move, as the type of animation played will depend on the value of the move variable in our script. It is the move value that will blend between idle, walk and run animations. The move value is dependent on the current velocity of the NavMesh agent attached to the player. Let's double click on the blend tree to open it. If we select the blend tree, we can add animations to it from the inspector window. Let's click the plus arrow to add an animation. We want to add a new motion field. Let's add an idle animation from the Animset Pro set. Let's repeat this step to add a motion field for walk and another one for run. Let's set the threshold of move to two. This will match with the parameters defined in our script and allow us to blend between three animations instead of the default of two. If we press play on the animator inspector and scrub the move slider in the blend tree, we can see that the animations blend from idle at a threshold of zero, walk at a threshold of one, and run at a threshold of two. Let's return to our state machine by selecting base layer at the top of the animation window. We want our orc to idle when the game starts. Let's create a transition then, from the entry node to our movement blend tree. Let's right click on movement and set it as our layer default state. Let's also create a transition from our battle cry back to movement. In order for the battle cry and movement parameters to be controlled by our player controller simple script, we will drag a reference from the animator component on our orc to the player controller simple script. Now, when we press play, our character idles, 
and when we click to move, he blends into his walk animation. If we press the trigger button, in our case right click, an audio clip plays, the taunt animation is triggered, and a particle system is activated. This looks far better than the capsule we started with. By simply integrating the PBR character's orc pack asset as our character, bringing him to life with Animset Pro animations, and finishing him off with a weapon from Ancient Treasures, we have quickly and easily gone from a prototype to game-ready artwork. This looks far better than the capsule we started with. Here, we've seen how easily and quickly you can integrate content from the asset store into your project and bring your ideas to life. All of the assets shown are available now on the Unity Asset Store. And if you're subscribed to Unity Plus or Pro, you will receive 20% off on all Asset Store purchases. To learn more, please click the link below.